Then we are now on live. Okay. Uh, let me have the link from the transmission so you can share it. Okay. Private chat. There it is. So okay. copy the, uh, it's in the private chat. Okay, yes. So copy it in your in your in your social media links. In the in the private chat from the private chat I right right side. Ah, okay, the, here in the in StreamYard. In stream, ah yeah, okay. Yeah. I have. Okay, then I will send. We are super live right now. So share the link that I put on the private chat in your social media. Okay, yes. Yeah, me too again. I was shortly out, but now I'm inside. Okay. <laughs> So I think um, yes, we can we can start. I will put the link on the um, on the Facebook again. Okay. Then we are already live. Um, yes. Maybe. I will start with a short introduction. I'm sitting here in the OKK room in Wedding in Berlin um, in the exhibition Fritz's Amerikanisch from Ryan Falson. And uh, we are live um, connected with Ryan and uh, connected with um, Sasha from Project Ensemble uh, from Chile. He is administrating our um, live streaming and uh, yes the exhibition um, today is the last day but uh, unfortunately we had uh, the last two weeks uh, no public here in the gallery inside because of the uh, COVID-19 um, uh, prescriptions and uh, it was not possible to to have uh, public uh, uh, no public here in the gallery inside so um, we decided to share um, the exhibition, the last day of the exhibition here in OKK with uh, people um, via live stream with Ryan. We have uh, Ryan in Malta uh, live. So I want to introduce Ryan Falson, the artist from the exhibition. And yeah, Ryan, you're, Hi. you're welcome. Hi, <laughs> you're welcome. So it's the first time we do this. So if there are some technical problems, please uh, be not so strong with us. We are mm -hmm. trying our best. Um, well, the exhibition is supported um, by the Art Council uh, of Malta. Um, 
greetings to Malta, to people from Art Council, and also greetings and thanks to um, Michael Fenish. He is the curator of the exhibition. Um, we had the exhibition one month. Um, the opening was on 15th, um, no, 16th of uh, October. Yes, and we had a, a, a good public here, people entering, and obviously we had to um, organize the, the entering and people had to enter with masks and, and everything uh, because of the regulations. So it was not like uh, our exhibition openings before where we had uh, practically every time a kind of, of, of party and uh, a lot of people here uh, talking, uh, uh, having a beer. Yeah. And, um, uh, it's different. So the um, circumstances are really changing. Organized, and obviously, not everything only for us. The regulations, um, so like our exhibition opening, is well, where we have difficult for all all the um, exhibition uh, uh, exhibitions I think, all over the world. And yeah, we are trying to find a new way. There's something are really changing. We have a reverb. Pablo, there is some problem with the sound. I, I hear it. Exhibition uh, all over the world. And yeah, we are trying to find something. Pablo, there is some problem with the sound. I don't know what it is. I switched it off now. Okay, maybe we should go on like this. You can hear me now? Sasha? I switched it off now. Okay. Okay, maybe we should go on like this. Lo apagué porque estaba un, un, un reverb. So I think we, we should go on like this without the other camera because yeah. it, it makes no sense uh, if we have this. this um, okay. okay. Sorry, people. So, um, we. Ah, Sasha said it's okay. Ryan. Ryan, maybe it was open to so I think we, we should go on like this without the other camera because yeah. it makes no sense. Uh, um, okay. okay. Um, Ryan? You maybe have two different...
Okay, okay, you will get out for a while and try to enter again. So, well, um, we should go on uh, trying without the, the external camera because we have some, some technical problems uh, because of this reverb. Um, but now, for for me, the sound is okay. I can I can hear only only one sound. Okay, we will get out for a while. Hay como un un trastorno, no sé por qué. De audio. Okay, now we have um, Ryan out for a while. We will take him in again and try to find a way to solve this. <laughs> First time. <laughs> Technical problems, digital world is coming, but it's not sure if we are ready already, so we will try. Well, anyway, um, I want to explain a little bit about the, the, the exhibition um, of uh, uh, Ryan's um, work. So uh, Ryan is a Maltese artist. Uh, he is uh, living and working in Malta. He also has connections to Berlin, has been here in Berlin uh, also for a while. And um, we invited him because of his um, political artwork. He makes uh, a lot of um, paintings um, which are really um, uh, political in, 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 in several so, senses. Uh, and, uh, the, the artwork uh, itself is um, very colorful i would um has been named like a knife paintings has very much elements of knife it's uh, um the style it's a collage collage, uh, collage uh, um kind of work and it has very much elements of uh, of the comics also um his um work is a um, classical painting in that sense that he used mixed techniques uh, with oil and acrylic paintings um, and the items, the, the thematic items um, are taken from the um, everyday life um, concerning the political and social situation in Malta and um, he ever reflects the uh, actual actual political situations um, in his country and if we have the sound maybe I would uh, give the word to to Ryan himself to explain a little bit of, of his work and of his painting and then we can maybe switch into uh, some special uh, works to try to um, know a little bit more about about your work uh, ryan do you can hear me now yes oh fantastic it works so good, good. Yeah. so sorry for the interruption <laughs> short interruption we had and the technical problems uh, well again it's the first time we try this it's new for us for each of us also for you you talked already uh, but i will give you the word you are now free to to um, tell us a little bit of, of, of you of your person yourself and um, tell us about your work and how you you you, you get to this um painting uh, expressive uh, strong painting work uh, we have um here in, in in the okk gallery in berlin so please ryan good thank you pablo and thank you sasha for hosting us and then at the moment 
Turkey, of course, more Malta than Berlin due to um, the current situation. Um, I'm very glad that I managed to make it to the opening, um, which helps as well to travel a bit. And as well, it's always also nice to to be able to be there and join Pablo for the opening. Um, the body of work that I did exhibit in Berlin was created in Malta between in 2020, um, and it reflects on a on the political situation and um, re the religious factor on the Maltese islands. Uh, one keep in mind that Malta is very small. Uh, Malta is small, um, therefore the element of insularity and uh, it's very, very, it's very strong. Uh, and one, one has to experience that in order to really understand um, this effect. This effect had been, had been it had its impact on us for years, and even the jazz generations who grew up with technology. We still come from a from from a ways and means which may feel very very much restricted, very much reserved. Um, keeping in in mind that as well, the work, both the political and the religious, uh, were created before two thousand before September two thousand seventeen. And why to 2000, um, September 2017? Because it was the date where Daphne Caruana Galizia was assassinated, which was this jour Maltese journalist who uh, was quite um, notorious for her for her very investigative work. Um, so the work done before reflects what was brewing underneath, which wasn't exactly. Um, evident on the on the surface when it comes to to this to to the sun sort of the dodgy deals that were that were happening um uh, the religious aspect of, of the work of false malta is is known for for its catholic traditions we like to believe that we are direct descendants of saint paul who came to malta with faith and we remained faithful um since forever since 60 ad um but however the, the religious isn't just the beliefs unfortunately but it also verges on the on the social um, aspect of life i was looking at, at the Baroque and the Baroque aesthetic and the Baroque, the, the sort of the bigger is better approach that is very evident in, in Malta. Um, even the way we decorate, the way we we celebrate, the way we talk, the way we speak. I mean, in Berlin, which in Malta I consider myself to be very soft spoken, in Berlin, I, I, at points I could feel that I, could, I was shouting or I was talking too much. Um, when in Malta, I feel like a total introvert. Um, so uh, that was echoed in all these big, large-scale works, which I which I exhibited there. The works are explosions of color, as Pablo mentioned. They are made in acrylics. The colors they they disarray. Uh, the colors are super strong, and yes, uh, consciously the works are saturated. So the saturation in the works is felt. Uh, is there to echo the saturation that one feels when living in a tiny spot which, which you cross in an hour by car. Um, uh, there are as, as well influences from from Berlin, which I've, it's a city that I've lived in, that I travel to um, ever so often. Uh, so there is a hint of like the, the street art, the graffiti, the urban, um, element in the works, and there are also works like the RAF work, which is behind Pablo, which directly links to, to Berlin. Um, for me, from my personal experiences, this, this crossover between the, the exotic Mediterranean island to the urban, busy metropolis of Berlin, in my head, um, they, they, they exist parallel, and that is what I portrayed in that body of work. And um, maybe you can uh, tell a little bit more about uh, about your um, your island. Mm -hmm. You said it's very small. You can cross it uh, in one hour uh, by car. So um, I think um, the the art scene uh, itself in in um, 
in Malta is very overviewable. So, um, how, how how do you have working? So, do you have a, a art spaces uh, which are, you are related with? Um, I remember we also have some uh, support from some spaces. Uh, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about the, the art scene in Malta itself and uh, the colleagues uh, you are working with and um, which are supporting us, uh, our work also. So it would be nice to hear something about that. And the other thing, uh, which maybe it's interesting for our uh, um, audience, um, it's your uh, your language. Uh, uh, maybe you can tell a little bit about. Uh, no, you will. No, you will. Uh, um, well, how to say the um, mixture of um, origins or of influences, which uh, uh, is concerning your language. So yes, regarding the the art scene. Um, uh, as um, as I explained before, months, blah blah blah. However, in the past ten years, and I believe as well, thanks to two main factors, which were um, cheap, low cost traveling, plus um, the internet, social media, Instagram, uh, the <clears throat> the art scene evolved. It evolved as well due, due to new courses at MEMCAS, um, Art and Design, which is like an arts college in Malta. Um, and university, the new courses that were introduced, um, and there was a last 15, 10 years, there was a huge um, lift up uh, as well, moving from the kind of amateur to the professional, and that we actually we could believe that um, yes, art is a profession, and it's not just just any other hobby that needs to be supported by by an, another job. Um, art spaces in Malta are pretty much um, available. Uh, we, we, as Maltese, as Mediterraneans, we tend to be pessimistic and it's never enough and no, 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 we need more and we need this and we need that. Everybody everywhere needs more, everybody would like more um, art spaces. However, for what we are, um, I think we are pretty good. We have a new um, national museum, which is called uh, Musa. Of course, it stands for Muse, but that is um, mainly as a collection. And th at this point, in Valletta, which is the capital city, there are various art spaces, such as a uh, Valletta Contemporary, Studio 104, Studio 87. Uh, but, and there are also a couple of small spaces around, around the rest of the island. A network such as um, there's also Spazio Creative. Sorry, I forgot to mention that, which is a, like a center for creativity, which opened 20 years ago. And one is to know that a Fritz is Americanish, the exhibition at OKK was first exhibited at Spazio Creative under the name of Willows the War. Um, and that was quite a I mean, the large the fact that we, there were large scale paintings. It was quite um, a breath of, of fresh air, plus this, the, the subject team. Unfortunately, um, political artists in Malta are few and far between, and there are only a handful. So um, having such an impactful exhibition was uh, was something that is remember, I still remembered. I mean, I still have people talking about that exhibition or mentioning the exhibition with the big paintings. Um, uh, there are also networks such as Art ID who kindly supported us um, when I was in Berlin. They, uh, Maria Gallia from Art ID did join join us in Berlin and she did the features. So um, such support exists and uh, such, such support is there. Needless to say, there is, which um, Pablo mentioned in the beginning of our talk, um, Arts Council, Art, uh, Mars Council Malta which supported um, uh, funded the the exhibition plus as well uh, had been supporting me personally as an artist for the past years so that was a, a that is also a huge plus for a lot of um, successful Maltese artists at the moment um, regarding art spaces and workshops we don't have like an artistic hub that would be nice where like a, a number of studios are there and people could visit or even just artists they get together and they can pool in resources and share um so artists tend to the everyone is well connected and and everybody knows each other and um, but there is no no specific space which is 
a pity, but then again, I believe that it is what it is, and um, there is no point in trying to push things which are in there. Um, you know, the or the organic growth of of a scene of a city, it, it it's there, and as long as it's functioning, I don't believe much in. Of course, one is to improve, but uh, one to to just want everything. It's not on. Um, Language-wise, yes, Pablo was quite fascinated with the Maltese language, and rightly so. Yeah, of course. Um. Because it is a, a unique language, actually. It is the only language with Semitic roots, so Arabic roots, uh, but is written in the, in the Latin alphabet. Uh, as well, uh, it had borrowed a lot of words from Italian, and some from French and from from English, for the simple reason that Malta was a British colony colony for two hundred years and was under the Knights of Saint John, which was an order of of nobles basically who turned who turned knights um, uh, for two hundred years. So the ex and of course Malta was a, literally a port. So the exposure to different language languages had been throughout, and this language survived. Um, and somehow morphed into this very complex language, which I I do know a good number of foreigners living in Malta made the effort to learn the language, but um, let's say the success was to various degrees. So yes, when you hear us talk, when you hear us talking, you can the, the closest would be. Um, the, the Tunisian version of a of Arabic, so North African, Tunisian, maybe Moroccan, um, uh, so so it's not really that fast like the like the Libyan dialect. Okay, uh, yeah, thank you. Yes, of course, the the language is uh, something very fascinating for me because uh, I ever tried to uh, to. Introduce uh, the, the 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 language or the, the the certain mentality connected to the language also with the with the artworks and it's a very uh, personal uh, thing for me and uh, by hearing the the Maltese language I was really fascinated because it's uh, um, I think a, a lot of uh, um, Arabic influences uh, uh, but you also can hear of course the the Italian and the English. Uh, roots of, of the language so very singular and it's really uh, interesting because it's a, a small country with uh, i don't know half a million almost half a million uh, yes a little bit less yes and uh, a language which is uh, really old uh, has its roots in, in uh, coming from the last centuries and it's like very uh, hermetic in, in, in that sense, of course, it's an island, uh, but it's in the middle of this uh, Mediterranean uh, influence uh, sphere. And well, it's uh, I think for um, people who are interested in, in uh, studying languages, uh, Maltese language is a very special, very unique, uh, um, uh, very unique uh, cultural, um, how to say, um, speciality of the of the of the European languages. So, um, but I think it's a, an item, a part of that what we really want to talk to, to, to tonight. Um, to come back to your your work, um, you have a, a lot of uh, very special uh, thematics. Um, which are connected with the political um, development, with the political um, influences uh, uh, which are in, in Malta. Um, obviously, a lot of people outside have not much idea. And to be honest, before your exhibition, uh, Malta for me also was like a... Uh, terra incognita, <laughs> to say it somehow, and um, maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit of the, uh, about the, um, the political history of Malta and how do you uh, take all this um, this knowledge or all this 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 history, these uh, items, and how you 
put it in your in in your work. So um, it's I think a very uh, a big influence um, to have it inside of 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 the uh, own expressive work of the own uh, uh, visual language in that sense. Okay, um, so as I hinted before, Malta had been a colony for various powers uh, throughout its, its existence, and we only got our, our independence, we, we become self-rule um, in 1979. Uh, so that, that we are a, a baby um, republic, we are a baby independent state in that, in that scenario. Um, uh, if in 1800, the British forces took over the island from the French, which ruled for two years. And before that, before that, it was the the Knight of Saint John and the ones of the of the famous cross, which had been here for 300 years. My paintings, I mainly dwell on uh, the uh, the independent part of of the modern, very modern. Um, political history in Malta, and this is one is to keep in mind that in the 1960s uh, there was a quite a conflict between the Labour Party and the Church. The Church aiming to to remain conservative, to con to ser safeguard the Catholic roots of the island, while the Labour Party was pushing for a more progressive approach. Uh, they were uh, they were aiming for either we join the UK and we become part of the UK with the same rights, or else we're going to go our own way, um, and that that um, didn't happen. So then, in seventies, um, the British were still here, but we started our path towards becoming independent. In nineteen seventy nine, the last British forces left Malta. From then, um, the 80s were uh, very turbulent years in uh, in the political history for the simple reason that in 1981 there was an election where one party got the most votes, but the the other party got a got the most uh, number of of um, parliament members. So there was there was a bit of a of a gray area of a loophole. Uh, the in the polit in the in the, elect uh, the electoral system, which led to various um, clashes, various confrontations during mass meetings, um, which led to to the killing of a of, of a of someone who supported a particular party, so on and so forth. Strangely enough, um, this all ended in 1987 where the, the Labour Party lost power and the nationalists took over. Um, so after 1987, it was it was a different, a completely different scenario. Now me, being born in 1988, I grew up in a very serene country, um, getting to join the European Union, super peaceful, super serene, as if the, the, the conflicts from before didn't happen. Uh, now, of course, every island, every um, place has its own had its own um, conflicts, like Germany and RAF, which I refer to in my exhibition. The troubles in Ireland. Uh, but what what fascinates me and what what intrigued me to start this body of work was the the amnesia, the fact that um, there was literally um, a conscious and subconscious. Um, effort to erase the, the, the bad memories and not to pass them down to the generation, or as if they were passed down, they were passed down um, via um, the family dialogues, um, uh, and that of course gave a very um, one-sided opinion of of the of the facts of, of history according to to the beliefs of the parents or of the of the people who would. Be, be talking about this. Unfortunately, literature about these years is very scarce um, and unfortunately biased. Therefore, I made it my own quest to patch together a an, op, um, an objective point of view as much as possible. 
However, I refrained from um, adding or, or from from doing work which is strictly speaking um, like a, a historical documentation of what happened or to refer to particular events or particular people. I left it a little bit more sort of not generic, open, open is the word, while re trying to put in um, a my generation's point of view as much as possible in, in the works and <clears throat> even linking it to what, uh, as I referred before, what was happening in Malta, this idea that we, I think 2015 onwards, the there was an economic boom in Malta, we were going for the national presidency, we were going for um, capital of culture, which happened in 2018, therefore it was more, 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 the, um, more, more bars were opening, more money were floating around, um, and that led to us being an element of feeling good, feeling on top, feeling of um, we are little kings in our little kingdom. And this was reflected in, in various ways and means, say, like I said, the bars in Valletta, the cars, uh, which becoming, you can see decals on cars, becoming more expensive, um, and the general feel of prosperity of, of like, in, let's enjoy it while it lasts. So that I merged all of that, and with my work, my works are narratives. My work, my works can literally be read like like books when you are unfolding one layer after the other. Um, so what I what I did in, in the works was I meshed it all up and created a very personal, very I would say powerful um, interpretation of these factors. Okay, thank you very much um, for this um, well introduction for all the people who are not really introduced in the in, in the Maltese uh, um, politics and the Maltese uh, social uh, complexes. Um, yeah, you mentioned the, um, the violence and the, the political. Uh, um, disruptions uh, um, of the of the country uh, which has a lot to do with the influence of the of the church obviously um, uh, and the religious conservatism in that sense um, maybe want to um, come up to uh, talk about um, a very special case which uh, um, reflects practically the, um, um, this political problematics or this political uh, items uh, which you have been talking about. It's uh, about the um, Maltese journalist um, Daphne Caruana Galicia. Uh, she was murdered um, two years ago. Um, I remember when we had the, the opening uh, of our exhibition uh, it was just the day uh, two years ago uh, when she was killed. Um, she was, uh, um, yeah, killed by by a car bomb in uh, Neta. So maybe you can you can uh, talk a little bit a little bit about that because you also referred uh, about her and her work in the in the video you presented here in OKK as. Uh, part of the exhibition. So maybe um, it's the right time now to uh, remember her work and remember her as, as a free journalist, which was um, suddenly broke out of life and broke out of the political scene of the political work she was doing. So maybe uh, some, some words about that, please. This week, uh, I was talking to, to a group of students from university, and someone asked me what I would change from the from the body of work that I have at OKK um, now, in the light of, of the murder of Daphne Caron Galizia. And my answer was, I would change nothing for the simple reason that I that that the work that I have there is a documentation of what Daphne was talking about, or was she trying to, to um, 
uncover that this the link between the the, the powers and crime which which were happening on the island at the time and are still happening now we are we are all aware that what happened what Daphne was saying it's it's out there it's on black and white and to was silence for that reason because what she was saying was based in the truth uh, so the works there are are a again a documentation of of what was going on after the murder i think we if if I had to do another body of work, it would it would speak different. It w it won't be uh, maybe hinting at. It would be more concrete, more um, uh, based on her findings actually, because they were they were there and they were called quote her fact, which led to the resignation of a of a prime minister back in December two thousand nineteen, and that sort of shook the island. There we did see a good amount of protests in Valletta, um, which, which of course, uh, Maltese population and protests, they don't really, really go well together. Um, it really needs to be something big for, for the for Maltese to take the streets uh, um, in, these, in these days. Um, so yeah, Daphne was a was a very particular journalist in my opinion. She had her her super super like hits. Um, maybe some techniques which I personally don't really agree with, but one can never um, put put her down for for the work that she did. And she was ex the one who actually the only person in Malta was actually out there saying what nobody dared to, to wear in public without fear, basically. So that is, of course, to be highly admired and the, the admiration for her throughout Europe is totally deserved. Already the, the um, well, the difficulties uh, um, what you have in in, in Malta uh, in in politics uh, involved in uh, uh, the organized crime and uh, I think due of the of the size of the country it's obvious that it's uh, uh, very in the weaved and it's uh, very uh, um, difficult to um, to work in a in a, in a free way um, to really uh, uh, uncover the, the reality of, of politics and um, I think uh, in your work you have a lot of um, uh, of visual attempts uh, you try to find out or to try to, to, to cross these uh, two things uh, of politics and violence um, which are um, well you told about a, a very very obvious or very visual uh, in the daily life of uh, of the maltese reality um so you have some some paintings here about about warriors about war about violence about uh, drugs about uh, um, well the it's difficult to explain how how, how all this uh, all these elements are really uh, the the base or the, the the fundament of the of the of the politics. So how you as an artist um, are moving in 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 that scene? How how you um, you can make your your work free uh to be very clear and to be uh, straight to 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 tell or better to show the things um are you sometimes a little bit afraid of uh, what you are doing could maybe have uh, some consequences um within your work maybe so you also are uh, uh, giving classes uh, to pupils um, it's not so easy, I think, to, to, to really to speak free, to, to uh, bring out what you what you want to to give to the audience, to give to the public. How are your techniques? How are your your possibilities uh, of your artistic work in that sense? 
No, um, I believe that um, the, this this a strong key in my in my work and the fact that uh, first of all it's uh, it's coming from a consistent artist and the fact that um, there is no agenda with the work. I think here yeah, honesty, the brutal honesty, the, the truth um, is is the voice of is echoing is voicing what others a, lot, a good number of honest people think of other honest people want to want to discuss or want, or they are reflecting the conversations they have with their with themselves um like people from my generation we did we have to come to terms with the fact that we were we grew up like i said the political stuff plus as well we had to grow up with with a, a religious baggage you know who turned into catholic guilt and I think the society became much more open in uh, early 2000s when we started questioning the fact that all the all the religion um, exposure that we had was not needed. It kept us back, um, and uh, sort of the the fact before saying that you don't attend mass and you don't believe and whatever it was a big big statement. Nowadays it is uh, with people. Uh, People my age or even younger, of course, it's it's the norm, you know, to, to have non-believers. So we move, then we move in the right direction. Um, the fact that the work is, is solid and the fair, the work the work is backed by by arguments, by narrative, and um, uh, and in this case, discussion is important. That's why I insist on having catalogs. Why I insist I have captions. And for Berlin, I also did a a video which went with with the works um once you discuss once you once you show that uh, what's there it's coming from solid sources it's coming from research it's not just um frivolous stuff up in the air you know you just draw um Tony montana from scarface standing in front of a pile of coke and saying that he's maltese you don't and there is it there it is um, you don't do that because, of course, you just want to shock. You just want to have people um, smile. Uh, it's not the role. Uh, actually, all the work has a very dark undertone. Uh, so that really, really gave res respect to the works that they are not not just there to, as again, to just to just you know pass a comment, but. It's it's not just common. There's a whole whole discussion that can go on with the works, and I must say that both in 2017 and even now, um, unfortunately, of course, locals, Maltese people couldn't um, attend the the exhibition because it was there. Although the Ber the Maltese community in Berlin and the embassy as well really supported the exhibition and the the opening, and it was it was. Um, Super good, uh, but I had, when I had discussions about about the work, everyone admits that it's a heavy body of work. That it's not work that is maybe appreciated by everyone, or it's not work which which deals exactly with beauty. Um, but as soon as one breaks down the idea of the uh, of what's happening, and one understands the narrative, the um the layers of the works then i i always have had very very positive um feedback and discussions about the work yes uh, talking about the the feedback uh, of the of the work so um i only can agree with that so uh, all the people visiting the exhibition um they uh, have been very uh, amazed about the work about the technique about uh, your message um, um I, I was now uh, showing a little bit improvised sorry because of our technical problems with the other camera um the parts of the of the of the paintings um you have here in in, in okk and yes the the feedback of of the people was really really good so um, a lot of people found it interesting and people started uh, we had discussions with some uh, uh, some visitors uh, which have been over over an hour uh, standing in front of the, of the paintings and discussing discussing about um, uh, about the, the work itself and about 
the whole thematics and uh, people started to introduce themselves in, in, in the Maltese reality. And I think for, for an artist, um, especially for a critical artist, uh, which we as, uh, as a gallery, as a, a project space are, are searching for, um, it's very important to uh, to balance uh, uh, this work between uh, political reality and expressive artwork. Um, so we have a lot of different items which are very interesting. Of course, we will not be able to discuss uh, each work uh, this night, but uh, I wanted to ask you um, your ideas or your motivation uh, in special uh, for um, this work, which is here behind me, um, the work which is practically the, the title work of the exhibition, uh, which is called Fritz is Americani. Uh, uh, it's about the German reality and German politics of the um, well of the past decades. Um, I think it's uh, talking about the uh, health, the um, terrorist organization, uh, uh, left wing uh, communist terrorist organization, and the relation uh, of Germany and uh, the United States, uh, which we all know that um, the relation is more than, um, well, social political, it's also a military um, relationship, which is very strong. And well, we had now in the US the past week uh, elections and uh, we saw that American people um, really get rid of uh, a president which is uh, representing strong right wing and uh, a strong uh, a populist uh, um, politics which uh, is influencing practically the whole world so my question to you is uh, how how you uh, uh, got this this relationship with, between the the german past when we are talking about the the, the red uh, uh, army fraction the rif so we're talking about the, the 70s the 80s um, within maybe a little bit in the 90s, um, how you, you, you come to this work and how you saw it from, from, from outside, because it's a very special uh, German uh, uh, item, very special German thematics, which is uh, really uh, a controversy. And I think from uh, every political position, there are different views to, to this historical uh, process which was going on here in, in Germany. So maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit how, how you get to this uh, to this thematics and uh, why you, you, you made such a strong uh, um, statement about uh, exactly this, um, this political uh, phenomenon, how to say it, maybe phenomenon uh, 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 in Germany and uh, it's interesting because you you have a view from outside. So probably we as Germans uh, have a different lecture of that. Maybe you can tell a little bit about of this this work, Fritz uh, Amerikanisch, which we have been using. Uh, yes, uh, of course, the outsider point of view. I was aware of it, although I've, uh, like I explained, I've visited and lived and worked in Berlin for a short stint. Uh, however, of course, I, I remain an outsider. I'm, I'm fully Maltese. Uh, but however, I included this work as if I feel that it was parallel. This um, which was what I explained earlier with the factions from the, from the local parties, uh, which were resolving to violence as to, to get what in their opinion was um the right or or the what well, in which direction should the country go um, so this uh, it's a personal interest as well these sort of these factions who believe that they should get um uh, they should get 
their their way in any way possible as uh, as much as organized crime interests me um how these sort of groups they bond together as to create change for the good or for the bad we'll call it whatever you want um, so i heard that the the particular painting started off by by an article which i which i read um which dealt with the theme of the of the left nowadays um where does it stand the techniques that the left is using to to remain relevant which are 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 debatable on various levels some say that um, one should pick up arms again other arguments saying that um, it's good to, to be peaceful others are saying that the left is becoming irrelevant because the left likes to be um defeat uh, on the on the def defense side it's it's because it's always safe to to criticize and say we won't change we won't change but then no practical solutions are being offered by the left so of course that is all all discourse that is that is out there um which brings us to the title of the painting and actually to the exhibition um no sorry not to the title but the the other text present on the on the painting which says are you happy now mr raf uh, the the Mr. RAF, the Mr. Raf, is representing um, left wing ideology in this in this case, um, and of course I'm I'm merging on the on the on the extreme for the simple reason that I I wanted to pick a particular point in time as I was picking with the other paintings is to to create a bridge a dialogue between past and present and eventually even future um so i was asking this this guy this, this question from the article um are are the is the left happy at the moment where where is the left going so on so forth um that was uh, mirrored juxtaposed with the the political and the historical context of the of the raf um and of course the title fritz is the american americanized uh, the pun on the for for us um, Maltese English language doesn't really exist. Um, however, I like the fact that just via a, a change a play with letters um, doesn't it means that Fritz is it doesn't mean that Fritz is American, but he is Americanized. He became an American, and for me, the, the sort of negotiations of of values um, uh, or, or of uh, um, of political beliefs, um, it's something that, that totally intrigues me on on various levels. How people do change their 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 beliefs according to deeds. Um, so that is in a nutshell what why I created that that painting. Yes, thank you, thank you for this explanation. Um, which I have been waiting for, really, because uh, the time you have been here in Berlin, um, unfortunately, was very short, so we had not so much time to really uh, uh, talk uh, um, deeper in, in, in all these in items and all these political uh, things, which, uh, of course, it's uh, very important also to to have this, this, this dialogue um, between... Uh, the presenters and the producers. Um, therefore, we are now here and uh, trying this for us, this new format um, to talk about the, the, the work. Um, yes, um, there was an, an, another thing which uh, I had uh, in mind the whole time and I, I was thinking about how how was your your past, your your youth, uh, um, your period as a as a teenager? Uh, because um, what I read out of the paintings, I I, I see a lot of uh, well, to name it, a lot of punk elements. So I think. Uh, the um, punk subculture has uh, a lot of influence uh, in your work. So, um, where does this influence come from? Exactly, how was your your past as a as a teenager? How did you develop uh, your, um, your personal life? 
um, and how this this uh, uh, development or this this, this um, uh, experience uh, influenced your work. So it would be especially for me also interesting to to hear something about that um, because I'm not the only one. So a lot of people said, "Oh yeah, there is a lot of." A lot of punk elements which are really um, maybe not so evident but they are there so please uh, tell us a little bit about uh, subculture and how you um, <clears throat> you um, have been able to transform this own experience into into your artwork um yes of course i i from from punk rock, I spent my youth listening to strictly punk. Uh, I favorite remaining the the seven seven punk, the the original British punk, uh, from the Clash to to Sex Pistols and all all those um, bus cocks, that kind of genre. I I like melodic punk. I I also like the hardcore stuff, the UK eighty two, um, GBH kind of kind of um, punk, I like Italian punk a lot, and um, so yes, my exposure to punk had, had always been there. Like you said, Pablo, maybe um, it, you don't see safety pins and you don't see ripped, ripped um, uh, jeans uh, ripped jeans in my in my artwork, you know, it's not, it's not direct. However, uh, one, anyone who had touched punk rock um, can immediately see the punk element in, in the work. Um, both aesthetically, I mean, I'm literally collaging. We, one can interpret those paintings as, as if it is collage on, um, on it is painted collage on on canvas. Uh, but even the, the the spirit, you know, this this questioning and this links to back to what I said before, where punk rock was not just beers and cheers, but um, a lot of punk rock, even if it if it was done in the most uh, uh how you say twisted way like happy way i have bus cogs in head for example there was always a, an element of existentialism underneath there was always a, an element of um, yeah it's funny it's all nice and games it's all colorful however we are asking questions how we're living where we're going what's happening um, there's always an element of, of observation in good punk rock in my opinion um uh, and that is what the, these observational skills are super evident in, in the work. Um, and like punk rock, the, the paintings are run up apologetic. They are in your face, maybe too much in your face. They are fast, they are loud, they are aggressive. Um, but they're not, they're not um, aggressive for the sake of being aggressive, but they're aggressive for the sake to, to punch the, the viewer in the face, to, to, to give a reality check. So it's like, yeah, yeah, this work is going to drag you in because it's like, boom, it's an explosion of color. Um, but it's not an explosion of color because it's nice to be colorful. I mean, it, it's not hippie work. Um, however, it's it's it slaps you in the face with with reality, and of course makes you question, makes you makes you link the different pieces of the of the work together for the viewer to come up with their own um, interpretation of, of the works. And for me, that own interpretation in, in that particular work is super important. Um, uh, and I did have a lot of, of discussions with people who literally read my, my works upside down the other way around. But for me, the thought process, the way they were forming narratives was interesting. And I feel as well that felt the viewer a little bit of a of a of, a, of the very personal experience of an artist um, when the artist is creating a, such works. I believe that most people who are not practitioners, they can't imagine the intensity um, of, of the process when, when creating an artwork, both from just drawing, just the act of copying, the act, of, the act itself on putting paint on paper to, to giving birth to, to an idea or the ability to express oneself um, beyond words, you know, or beyond text, which, which are the most two um, common ways of, of expression. Uh, but, but visuals, how visuals are, are so, so vast to express oneself when the viewers are given this chance to actually pierce um, their own opinions together, um, I find that 
very very satisfying uh yeah it was a uh, uh, questions um i really i really wanted wanted to know how your um uh experience uh, has been influencing your your, your work in, in in that sense so for me this uh, explanation is uh, very precise thank you for that um yeah let's go on to an, uh, uh, an other item uh, from, from from subculture mm -hmm. to education um you already mentioned that you are a teacher um in, uh, in Malta, um, you are a teacher in university. No, and I, uh, if I teach um, secondary school uh, oh, secondary. in sixth form. So I teach uh, students between 14 to 18. Okay, yeah, that that was my 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 point uh, because um, you um, you come from a, a very strong uh, uh, subculture and you have uh, the teenagers there in front of you, so you are the teacher as a <laughs> a guy who is uh, um, using this this subcultural, this expressive, this. Uh, uh, loud and, and, and strong elements uh, in, in your work and um, maybe you can tell us about how is uh, <clears throat> your method, your relationship with the, with the new generation, which actually is a very uh, a critical one uh, in comparison to maybe our generations. Uh, so I think that there are a lot of uh, uh, political and, and, and ruptures of mentality. How, how, how do you deal with that? How, how you approach to the, to the young people with your work, with your experience, with your uh, knowledge? It um, would be interesting to hear something about that. Uh, I think they are, again, the, the exposure to so many uh, sources of information, whether fake news, whether um, proper stuff, um, which, of course, it is a it is a skill in itself for us. We immediately realize what is fake and, no, and what not. We are older because we we are equipped with better skills as to as to filter because we come from from other times where uh, it was we had less information so since we had less information we had more time to look at the same sources and analyze the same sources nowadays there's so much to see that you end up seeing everything in a um, in a rush and treating it um, the same on the same level so if a is not so correct as b However, the time is very limited because, well, before there was only source A and source B to read and see and reflect. Nowadays, there is A, B, C, and D, and D, and F. And the more you, the more you search, the more you, you find. Um, so I think, yes, it is a much more informed generation plus a much more alienated generation. So what I find is that um, they are ones who are really giving in during lessons um, and they do come up and they are very critical of the education system, for example, um, how life that teach, uh, how school is teaching you so much subject but doesn't give you life skills, doesn't give you um coping mechanism to deal with emotions or to or to um mental mental state beings um and it teaches you all the abstract stuff when it comes to mathematics however it doesn't teach you how to fill the the, the text form so they were saying what's the point in 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 such um, useless menial um, information about 12 subjects and they they the secondary boys they study 12 subjects um uh, so i think that the, the, then again all of them the, they're they're more open-minded but they all need their their phone break the, or they, they either without their phones i had boys who tell me um half joking half true um oh without internet i'll kill myself without internet i'm like 
okay, I, I get it that um, you're not really going to kill yourself, but you're just um, exclam putting an exclamation mark on how um, internet is important and your life reveals around internet. Um, but it is literally an addiction, and they're addicted at, at such a young age. Me, I'm more in favor of technology, and I think it, it really helps, even in school. Um, I like my, my boys, they have their phones with them because they can do research on the spot. And they can look at images, we can save on printing stuff. Um, however, yes, there's so much distractions that, that um, I don't think that we are equipping our our younger generations to deal with, with the overdose of information that is on the screen. I don't think that we are equipped ourselves, let alone how we're going to help um, the younger generation not to be hooked to the screen. But I think that will that will find itself uh, and how you say it will it will balance itself out like again when i was younger i remember talks about television and not to watch too much television because there's violence and it's addictive and you waste time it's the same and nowadays television became obsolete and we all control our television um we will control our social media when we get a little bit more more bored with that Maybe something new will come up and we'll get alienated, alienated with something else and the, the cycle continues. Um, with my work, I, you, I teach in an international school. So I most often my students are very open minded. Uh, and I and actually a number of students of mine, especially the older ones, they do come to my exhibitions. They are aware of that my work is um, uh, is pretty much um, not everyone's cup of tea. Um, and we did actually have discussions about the work. Even I just took my students and gave them a private view. So it's it's fine. Um, the school uh, supports what I do. Uh, the school believes that, yes, what I'm doing is very valid. And even the fact that the, it, it's not me just painting and putting stuff online and no one cares but the fact that i'm recognized by artists and that my work is in collections that really gave a push to, to recognition and acknowledgement um i did had some parents complaining to the school management funnily enough about um, some work involving nudity uh, but then again they were um they were sort of told that listen artists um, the, it, what is being done it's of pornography it's not true however the gist is art and um, with art uh, it's uh, one can understand that the intentions are not there to provoke but to to show for this or the, in this case it was for for um for the consumption of the body via social media it was a body of work which was titled dirty pictures and basically i was i was interpreting how we had made ours, uh, ourselves um, uh, available for for social platforms, especially in there to um, to sort of be analyzed and to be looked at and to, to be skipped and to be liked. Um, and basically, we are meat market. We are products. We are each other's products, and we are literally consumed on a screen as people. And then again, I, I evolved a lot of the the, the female figure. There were some issues with that, but overall, um, I, I never interfered. Okay, yeah, thank you uh, very much for this <laughs> explanation. Um, yeah, it's uh, very interesting because um, I think we come from from an, an, another generation. And I have to admit, I am uh, absolute from an analog generation, and our uh, uh, childhood and our uh, time as teenager uh, was very different uh, to that what is happening today to the young to the young people. Uh, you mentioned, uh, for example, fake news, which is a a term which we practically did didn't know in, in, in that time. So we, we, we have not to deal with that. We have to deal with other things, of course. And yeah, for us, television was uh, the kind of media we we had in that time. And now the digital world is uh, really full of information. It's really a completely clash of information for um, for people, not only for the young people, it's also for us. So it's, uh, I think not a 
not a huge different uh, um, concerning this um, yeah overdose of uh, information and uh, the, the the whole change of uh, uh, the reality which is going uh, much uh, more and more uh, digitalized and more and more uh, into the, the, the new media in, in that sense so um, that's a good switch to the to, to, to my next question because uh, now with the um, uh, pandemic uh, rules and um, obviously the um, the circumstances we are living uh, during this uh, um, pandemia, this worldwide pandemia of uh, the virus of COVID-19, um, everything is, is changing, um, not only in, in, in terms of uh, freedom uh, for people to, to, to meet each other, uh, um, we're speaking about the lockdown we are living now uh, in Berlin. There is everything is closed. There are no bars. There are no restaurants. There are no exhibitions. Uh, you cannot go to the museum. You practically uh, have to um, switch or to, to uh, your your social life outside, and 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 you have to. To, uh, to order, to organize your life uh, very much in private room, but the new public uh, field is the, the di digital space. So the internet, like we are now talking uh, on, on this platform, on the StreamYard platform, uh, uh, in other circumstances, we would have been sitting here in OKK with maybe, I don't know, 20, 25, 30 people around discussing and uh, sharing uh, some food, sharing some drinks, which now is not possible. Um, how do you think the artistic work, so maybe not the artistic work itself, so we are still in our studios working our work, so we are, um, in that sense, the, the, the producing, um, <clears throat> the producing, producing um, process is it's not very different than before but the the process of uh, presenting and the process of communicating with with the with the audience with the public is very different and uh, we have to find new strategies well this is the result of uh, of this of this changes of this uh, new um, reality how do you think um, we can we can go on we can go further with our work as uh, visual artists um, in the sense of uh, uh, presentation and in the sense of uh, reaching public so i think the the digital world even if we come from a very analog one is uh, the option for our work also um i don't know it's for me for example it's a very uh, um, strong change um we are doing now and i think we will be in that mood for a while so i think the, the, the pandemic uh, circumstances will not change so fast or, or will not have this this rollback uh, uh, again in the, in, in the times uh, we had before. So here in Berlin, uh, we are in a very um, uh, subcultural city, which is, uh, well, the well-known party city, all the people on the street, on the clubs, on the bars. This is, uh, for now, it's over, and we don't know how long uh, we will remain in, in, in this mood. So my question is how do you see your or our work uh, in the future? How do you think we should proceed? And how do you think we should um, try to, to, to generate new, new forms of, of kind of visuality of uh, presentation of our, of our artworks, which are indeed very analog, the work itself? 
Yes, yes. Um, uh, like you said, Pablo, you use the word the word um, roll rollback. Um, I think that we we all like to believe that um, what will happen is the the pandemic would pass, and then we will literally as if there was a pause a pause button. Life was paused. We're and we're going to go back to what was normal before. Um, however, I believe that that may be problematic for the simple reason, first of all, for economic reasons. I think that clubs, galleries, places which were surviving before the pandemic, which um, they were getting money in, putting money out, but they were managing. Um, if they they have to stop for now we're talking about it started in March, so we were in November, so we're, we're talking eight months already. Um, so these places that used to support a lot of maybe small scale projects, beginners project, emerging artists, uh, may be facing financial financial issues which will wipe them off the, off the face of the earth. Um, then again, we don't know if, if yes, there would be the, vac the vaccine, but the vaccine would take time to be 100% safe or secure or, or protect everyone. Um, so yes, that it's it's not like, oh, we'll get the vaccine and we're done. Um, things take, take, take time. Um, again, there was a re already a shift for for artists to to lean more to lean more on the digital um, platforms to exhibit because it is I mean much easier uh, you know I just finish a work I take a photo I upload um, and take it from there it's as if I've, I've exhibited and um, I think that unfortunately first of all it's more convenient because the art is being distributed to the audience in in the in, in the comfort of of their place uh, or where they're out on their phone um so there's no need for them to make the effort to go out we are we are becoming used to that with everything i mean home deliveries food deliveries uh, uh netflix there's no need to go to the cinema there's no uh, we are in, in times where um uh, you don't wait for anything but everything comes to you so I think that would reflect to the to the visual arts as well. Um, you know, it's nice to to watch a, a movie on a on a big screen with the surround sound in a cinema. But then again, if we if we balance the the popularity of Netflix as opposed to the cinema, we all know who's going to win because um, the the audience likes comfort. So I think that is taking over. So that is that is and will take um, over uh, visual arts, unfortunately. Um, uh, where even the role, I think the role of the gallery in the coming six month year is going to be highly questionable, um, as um, as the the audience, the collectors are they they are. They have the the artists away at the, at the press of a button. So the use of the gallery as a as a middleman is as a place where to show and the the gallery that would have the guest list and the the, the the guests would be invited. I think that work is done by the audience, by the artists themselves, and um, therefore the the role of the gallery stays more of. Um, a connector or a or a platform like like we have at the moment, you know, galleries who are to have such would stream again, give give the audience um, such talks at the privacy of their home, or um, galleries with strong social media profiles, which um, a gallery which would upload an artist and then the the artist is picked up by the followers from the social media. So these these two models of um, reaching out to to audiences are uh, yes are very much um, uh, taking roots, taking off, uh, and I believe that that is the direction that things would go. Um, of course, the importance of the gallery, the importance of remaining of experiencing art first hand remains and of course i mean it's it's like reality i mean i can i can drive a car on my playstation but then it's not the same as if driving a car in the street um however that for most people that simulation may may be the same um, uh, so with the arts it might happen it might happen 
that way. There is also the economical part of the of the of the galleries. How feasible it is with the pandemic, um, with people who are losing their jobs. So so there's or funds maybe being cut for the arts because they're not given preference. But it I think for that it is a bit too early to to speculate. But what will change? I think after the pandemic, the role of the gallery and the galleries would would totally change. Okay. Yes, I, I I think the the same way. So we really have to uh, find new ways to uh, well, not only to present our work, uh, maybe to to develop the whole whole work or to uh, um, to change the whole production of of, uh, of our visual visual art. Um, yes. Um, we will see how it how it will go on. So, uh, like I mentioned it a few times today, we uh, are trying also to to get this platform, uh, this digital platform, to um, to show the works. We will have obviously uh, still analog here, and hopefully, times will maybe not have this rollback uh, I mentioned before. But maybe a kind of normality for uh, for exhibition visitings, uh, like we had before, uh, because it's very important to show the the analog artworks uh, also in an analog way. So obviously we will try to uh, find a, a possibility and a format to present our uh, our artists, our invited. Uh, uh, artworks uh, and exhibitions um, in a digital way so we're working on that and we also want to, to, to have a kind of regular streaming uh, with our colleagues uh, uh, with the actual works and maybe also with the works with the past work so we are working on that to try to find a, a way to to give the audience um, the possibility to to share and to enjoy uh, the artistic works we are we are presenting here in OKK. Okay. Um, well, um, we are going on, and um, yes, I want to thank you, Ryan, to be practically the the first one here on this on this online platform. Nice. Um, sorry for the the technical problems. It's fine, it's fine. Sorry for the, the improvisation mood and the spontaneous uh, uh, exchange we had. But uh, anyway, uh, I found it very interesting and uh, very. I'm very glad to to, to have you have you here. Uh, on this on these platforms because it's the analog one and the digital one so we are kind of uh, getting hybrid in that sense so we all do and uh, yes i um, also want to give uh, thanks again to uh, art councils malta which uh, is supporting the exhibition and um, also the other um, the other artistic platforms you mentioned, uh, Spacio Creative and uh, Art ID Network. Um, also, very uh, much thanks to to Michael, uh, Michael Fenish, which is the curator of the exhibition, which unfortunately couldn't uh, be uh, present uh, in this on this platform today tonight. Um, and yes. I wish you um, a lot of energy for your future work. I saw you have been working on a new series of uh, paintings, uh, which you are presenting on Facebook. So everybody is uh, free to join uh, to your Facebook account and uh, Instagram account to, to um, follow your work. Uh, your uh, new work, which is really a little bit uh, different than that what we are showing here, which is uh, um, an older work of uh, last year's. So yes, um, thank you very much, Ryan. Um, greetings to Malta. 
go on with the work. Um, yeah. We are in contact, so we are working also on uh, international presentations um, uh, outside of Berlin. We will try to get more uh, more possibilities to 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 show our artists. Uh, in other spaces, on other platforms. So we are in touch. Um, I thank you very much. And I think um, we will um, finish this evening with the, the video, which was recorded by our colleague, uh, Richard Klaus, um, who is also present here uh, in the back supporting um and yes um again we are in contact have a a good work and uh, good luck for the upcoming presentations exhibitions online or analog whatever future will bring us and yes I don't know if you want to say a few last words for this evening. Um, again, sorry for the technical problems we had. Um, and hopefully the audience uh, will follow the upcoming uh, OKK digital platform interviews with colleagues, uh, artists, curators, activists, and yeah, political and social people who are working um, on the idea to create new forms, new uh, formats of presentation of artistic work and special, which is our uh, work and uh, artistic, critical artistic work. So thank you very much, Ryan, to Malta and Hopefully, see you soon in Berlin yes. again. Yes. Or you, or you in Malta, or me in Malta, of course. <laughs> so we will see how the uh, things are developing yes. Yes. to get uh, to get able to travel and to to bring the different works to different places like we done yes. before. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you, everyone from OKK who had supported me throughout this month and a half, two months, which were quite um, intense. Of course, we had we had bumps because of the pandemic and um, traveling than expected with for the artworks um, uh, the, the opening, the different dynamics of the opening. The, the lockdown that we were hit by. However, I'm very glad that we managed to to bring art to the public together. Um, and as Pablo said, it's in the in the um, real version, in the, the physical version, it was it's not not um, redeemed this the, uh, reduced this exhibition to um, an online show. So I'm glad um, it might be my uh, my show, my my physical show abroad for for an for until the situation is better um so again thank you pablo thank you thank you everyone for joining and like pablo said uh, more information can be achieved by, via my uh, can be accessed on my on my social media platforms thank you very much and have a good night yes super thank you very much ryan Thanks, so, pablo. and uh, also um the last word should be uh, thanks to our colleagues um, in Chile. Um, this digital platform is uh, uh, possible because they are supporting us from Santiago de Chile, um, Proyecto Ensemble, which um, are yeah old friends from from our Chile time. So thank you very much to Sasha Finsterbusch and uh, Proyecto Ensemble, and we will see us again soon on this platform and Take bye care. to Malta. Bye bye. Ryan, thank you. Bye. Thank you, Pablo. Bye bye.